Hello, this is Paolo and in this video I'm going to show you how we can create beams of light like the ones you see in stage productions using reality and volumes. So, to create a, a beam of light we have to understand first how that effect happens in real life. Now, normally we don't see the light. The light is just all around us. We don't see the individual rays. But sometimes we can see that effect when there is something in the air that scatters the light. And that something can be dust or can be fog, which is made out of particles of water in suspension. And uh, what happens is those particles move around and reflect the light like teeny tiny mirrors. And um, when the light is focused in a certain way, then we can see the light going through that volume of scattering particles. Now, we can recreate that effect in reality by using volumes, which do exactly the same thing, and um, applying those volumes to a container. So, let's see how we can do that. First of all, we need to create the container. You know, we cannot just flood the entire world with fog. That would be kind of a, a waste. Um, to create a container, we can just use one of the primitives of Studio. And in this case, I'm going to use a cube. So, I'm going to go here and select Create a New Primitive. Actually, let's create a plane first, because we will need a floor for our world, so that's fine. I have set my uh, default plane at 100 meters, so that it's very large and I don't have to resize it every time. So I just click on Accept. And uh, let me just switch to the shaded version. And here we can see the plane in the world, okay? And so now let's create the cube that will be our container for the volume, for the fog. So let's go to cube. And here it is. So first of all, I want to resize it because this is kind of small. I want to create more of a rectangular shape. So we're going to do this and this. I'm using the universal tool. And I'm going to re re reposition our camera so that it looks straight at the volume. And I'll go just toward the volume. OK. So let's switch to the perspective view and see where we are. Here it is. This is our camera looking straight into the volume. Now, uh, to create a beam of light, I need to use a very specific type of light. I need to use a light that is focused. And so it a point light would not be right because it spreads light all around it at 360 degrees around. And uh, what we need to use is instead a spotlight. So I'll create a spotlight. And here is my spot. And so now I need to position this spot in the, right, in the correct way. So how do we do that? Now here is my spot. Okay. So I can move the spot around, but there is an easier way. I can just use the spot as a camera. So I go here in the controls for the camera and I'll select Spotlight 1 to look through the spotlight as if I was looking through a camera. And here I'm looking straight at the volume. So I'm going to just move away from that and reposition the spot. So it looks straight down to the cube at a diagonal, so like this. Okay. And my cube looks a little thin, so we're going to make it a little wider. Now, I am in the right position. But as you can see, this spot is very, very wide. And if we leave it at this configuration, then it will basically just flood the volume. That will be like being inside a, a, a fog bank with somebody uh, 
turning on headlights against you. It will just be a blinding light. That's not the effect we want. So what we need to do here is to narrow the beam and then make sure that it looks in the right position. So the first thing is very simple. I can go to the spread angle of my beam of my spotlight and see that it's set at 60 degrees. I'm going to change it to 10 degrees. And of course, this has changed our point of view. But let me just go back to our perspective view and show you the difference. OK, so here is our spot, which is actually a little too far away. So we're going to move it closer. OK. And a little more at an angle. So let me just show you the difference between 60, which was the default value, and 10. So this is 60. Now you see how wide that spot is. Now we want to see exactly where that spot will fall when traversing the volume will touch the ground. Now the volume will be just a, a bank of fog, so not completely solid, but the ground is completely solid. So in order to do that, with our spot selected, we're going to go here in the display section and look at the ray length. And I'll increase the ray length until it intersects the floor. Now you see how clearly that spot at 60 degrees of width is too wide. Now if I change this and I go to the light group and change the spread angle to 10, that is completely different. That works. Now we see that when it, it will intersect the floor, that will be right inside the volume. OK, so this is the good setup. It can work. Now we have to see how that turns into a beam of light. And to do that, we have to apply some of the reality magic. So I'll switch first to the default camera, verifying my position. Actually, we need to go a little, adjust our camera point of view a little bit. And maybe even the, the angle for the spot. But we'll see. Let's see what happens. OK, let's keep it in this way. So then we call reality. And let's go to the lights panel. We verify our spotlight. We verify the cone angle. That's all good. has been reported as it should. So now we can go to our materials tab and do the magic perform the magic that will change this into a beam of light. So the first of all, I want to change the plane because this is glossy. Glossy is kind of bright. We're going to have a, a bright light shining to it. We want to minimize the glare. So I'm going to change this to matte. And um, I want to change the diffuse color because nothing in nature is this bright, this white. So we're going to just lower this quite a bit. OK, so if we look at the RGB values, that's 182, 182, 182. I'm not going to give it any tint for now, just plain gray. Oh, OK, and so the, the floor is done. So let's go to the cube. What should we do with the cube? Now, we don't want to see the cube. We don't want to see the outer shell of the cube. We just want to use the cube as a container for the fog. But wait a second. We don't have the fog yet. So how we create that? We're going to go to the Volumes tab here. And in here, we have all the volumes that are in the scene. Now, by default, the reality creates a volume called Air. We don't have to use it. It's there just in case. But uh, that is not what we need. We need to create a completely different volume, one that is actually not thin air, but fog. And we do that by clicking on the Add New Volume button. So we click on this. Reality creates a new volume. We call this Fog. And I'm going to leave everything the way it is. 
but I'm going to click on scattered. Scattered causes the effect of scattering the light as I described at the beginning of this video. Now, the scattering is done based on a scattering color. Now, this is an interesting parameter because it looks like an RGB, but it's really more like a, a, an intensity value. And uh, that is measured by the brightness of the color. The brighter the color, the higher the scattering. Now, it's interesting to remember that a little goes a long way with this parameter. Just a little tiny bit of scattering creates a lot of scattering, depending on how big the volume is. The scattering is proportional to the size of the volume. So we start with something really small, like this. Okay, 12, 12, 12, that's perfectly fine. Let's leave it at this way. Just a tiny bit does a lot of scattering. So we confirm this. We have our volume here. Let's move back to the materials tab and work on our cube. We don't want to see the cube. We just want to see the inside of the cube. We just want to have the cube work as a container for the fog. So how do we get rid of the surfaces outside but we keep the container? That is done by changing the material from glossy to null. A null material is basically a material that doesn't show up. The geometry, though, is still there. The object doesn't vanish. It's still there, but it's completely invisible. So we select null, which has no parameters. There's nothing to do here. It's a completely null material. And then we click on the volume tab. The volume tab for the material assigns what volumes are used for the material out of the available volumes present in the scene. So here is our fog volume that we just created, and we want for the inner volume. Inner volume is the inside of the object. So I select this. The object goes away because there is no skin and the volume is not rendered in the preview because it takes too long otherwise. So we're all set. We have our cube. We have our light. We have everything. So we can just go back to reality and try to render. Let's see what happens. Will it work or will it not work? Ah, it works. Fantastic! <laughs> See how wonderful that is. A beam of light, as it should. This is fantastic. This is exactly the stage production uh, beam of light that we see in many uh, films, for example. And uh, it creates a perfect beam with a cone. It stops on the floor. Now we see there is an area outside here of uh, kind of edge, very soft edge. That is provided by the feather parameter in reality. So let me just close the lux and we go back to reality and look at the lights. Here at the spotlight, we see there is a cone feather. Basically, a feather is, is an area of uh, outside the, uh, all around actually, the cone that progressively becomes darker and darker. So if I want to create a, an edge that is sharper for our uh, beam of light, I can just change the feather from 5 degrees, that it is now, to 1, for example. And if I render it again, we should see a much sharper edge. And in fact, it is. Now, you see that the point where the beam hits the floor is completely white. Well, we can just change our exposure to linear and uh, estimate settings and lower this a little bit maybe like this 
even like this. To our liking, there is not right or wrong. I mean, there can be overexposure, but uh, there are many different shades of adjustment. This could be perfectly fine. This could be perfectly fine. Uh, we can see much more texture on the floor. Now I can also go to the light groups and for the spotlight click on RGB and in the picker change the color of our beam. Isn't this great? So this is how you create a beam of light using reality and volumes. Happy rendering.